We are going to start uh, the meeting, the webinar dedicated uh, to Lalstop Contents uh, WG. So our product uh, um, that is uh, dedicated to uh, manage the sclerotinia uh, disease um, on soil. So today I'm pleased to welcome uh, several speakers to, to present uh, some work that has been done uh, with the product. So um, I'm pleased to welcome, uh, first of all, uh, Adrien Richard, who, who is the field solution manager for Broadacre Crops uh, in Lallemand, in Lallemand plant, care, plant Care. So he will say a few words about uh, the Lallstop Contents uh, product. Then uh, we have uh, external people uh, outside uh, Lallemand. So I'm pleased to welcome Anne-Sophie Kwasi, who is working uh, for UNILET, a very well-known uh, French institute uh, for beans and uh, peas, so uh, for industrial crops. So she's the head of uh, the technical team uh, in UNILET. And we are also pleased to welcome uh, Joseph uh, from AgroProtect in Czech Republic. So he's a sales manager uh, in, uh, in a specific area in Czech Republic and he's very, he's very used to with also content so it's uh, already um, a while that he's uh, dealing with this product so we will at the end of the, the presentation he will share his experience that he has with the product and uh, tell you, uh, yeah, I'll tell you uh, a little bit more about uh, the technical approach on uh, mostly on canola crops. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to, to start, so a little introduction about uh, the webinar. So today we will a little bit introduce the disease, so what is sclerotinia on its cycle, so we'll uh, say a few words about that. Then uh, Adrien will introduce a little bit less of contents, what is the product, the product characteristic, and how to handle the product. And then we will have the Unilet Insight and uh, the experience that they have with the product for many years now on, the, uh, on vegetable crops. And then Yosef will present his experience uh, with the product. And then we will have a, a question uh, and answer session at the end. So don't hesitate to uh, ask your question on the chat and then we will try to answer all your questions that you can uh, that you can get so it's a recorded session uh, your camera or microphone are muted by default so if you want to speak we can open the the, the microphone if you want and you can ask for all your questions in the QR section uh, so please don't hesitate to do that so a few words about l'allemand uh, i I think, uh, I, I, I guess that uh, most of you know L'Allemand, but for, 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 for the one that don't know really the company, so we are a manufacturer of uh, my, uh, microbes, so mostly yeast, bacteria and fungi, uh, that's our uh, daily work, and uh, we are also providing derivate of these uh, uh, microbes, but we are fully dedicated to the microbe production. Uh, so sclerotinia, now about the disease. Uh, so sclerotinia is considered as a major uh, disease everywhere in the world. So it affects a lot, a lot of crops, more than 40 uh, species of plants can be uh, affected by this, uh, this disease. And it has a very important economical impact on, the, on, the, on two crops. And uh, like uh, by the crops that uh, you 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 know well, uh, canola can be affected. Uh, beans, uh, peas, uh, lettuce, uh, soybean, uh, endive, uh, and uh, also carrots. So all those economical crops uh, can highly be affected by uh, sclerotinia. So is the reason why it's important to control this disease. And there is many ways to control it, uh, including the use of livestock uh, contents. So a little bit about uh, the life cycle of uh, sclerotinia sclerotium. So sclerotinia sclerotium, it's the sclerotinia, uh, the main one uh, that uh, is affecting the most uh, uh, these crops that I just mentioned before. 
And uh, so here you have uh, the cycle of the, the, the sclerotinia, sclerotium. So um, just a few words about that. So all start from the soil. So the overwintering organ uh, that remain in the soil is the sclerotia that you can see on the, on the bottom of the, of the, the picture. So it's little stone, huh, as you can see here, that remain in the soil during the winter. And when the springs come, when the temperature are favorable for the germination of the sclerotinia, of the sclerotia, so they will germinate. And there is two ways to contaminate the plant. The first way uh, is by the roots. So the sclerotia will germinate, making uh, a mycelia that will affect the, directly the roots and uh, up to the, the stems of the, of the plants. And it's the, uh, this way that the uh, plant can be highly contaminated. So it's the first way how the sclerotia can affect the plant. The second way is by an aerial contamination. Is the reason why we consider also this disease as a foliar disease because the sclerotia are able to produce apothecia, which is a conidiophore that will contain a lot, of, a lot of aerial spores. And this apothecia will release a spore that will be carried by the wind, by the, <laughs> the rain as well. And uh, these spores will contaminate the aerial part of the plant. And the most sensitive uh, uh, part of the plant is, of course, the flower that are highly sensitive to the spores. And when the spores will fall on the flowers, they will contaminate the plant and the aerial part will be fully uh, attacked. So two ways, the roots and uh, the aerial part. But all start from the sclerotia, is because the sclerotia that will germinate, that you will get this contamination. And then the, you get the symptoms, and uh, depending on the level of contamination, but the, 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 loss, the yield losses can be, can be very, very high and then uh, the plant will die and fall down on the soil. And the, the residue, when a crop is really affected by the sclerotinia, the res residue will contain again new fresh sclerotia that will again recontaminate the plant. So you will have a new inoculum on the plant and then you will accumulate the sclerotia year after year. Okay? Now, just a um, few things about the prophylactic method, all the methods that can be um, uh, that are appropriated to uh, control the sclerotinia, so it's prophylactic method. So one is the use, of course, of uh, different fungicide, aerial fungicide, to control the uh, aerial contamination. The idea is to alternate the different fungicide in order to avoid uh, some resistance. Also, the management of the irrigation, because water is uh, the, the, the fact to bring water, it's a risk of contamination. So the irrigation management is very, very uh, important to manage in order to not get a high contamination. Also, the fertilization to not uh, over fertilize, over fertilize, over fertilized, sorry, to not bring too much nitrogen, because uh, if the plant uh, um, grow too, too, too fast, uh, it, uh, the plant is more sensitive to the uh, disease. Also to work with disease tolerant variety, if it does exist, so now we, we know that, for example, in canola, there is some disease tolerant variety that are coming on the market. So I think this is a good way also to try to reduce the contamination. And also all the decision making tools, there is some decision making tool on the market already. Uh, that's also a good tool in order to uh, manage the risk of uh, sclerotinia. And of course, uh, today we will talk about also contents, which is the product to manage the inoculum level of uh, sclerotinia in the soil. This is the only product to manage the sclerotia, so the source of uh, the contamination. Um, Adria will explain you well later the difference between the chemical product and the live stop contents uh, product because this is not the same way to manage the disease. Okay. A little bit about the history of uh, the product. So it's a long time ago that uh, Conitorium militans, which is the fungus uh, which is the active of the live stop condense product, has been discovered. So it has been isolated in 1947 
a long time ago in the US for its activity against, uh, against Sclerotinia. And it's the Profita uh, company in 1992 in Wismar in Deutschland, in, Ger not in Deutschland, Germany, sorry, that uh, decided to produce uh, a specific train of this conitorium minitor, so the one that uh, is part of the contents, and also at that time uh, it's Profita that distributes the product. Uh, on the market. So it was the, one of the first biofungicides introduced in the European uh, market. And in 2022, uh, this product has been transferred to, to, to l'Allemand uh, uh, by Bayer. So we have acquired the uh, Wismar company, so the factory, and also uh, the product that is still produced there. So it's uh, always uh, the, the Bismar uh, company that is producing contents with the same team, the same people, on the same way to produce the product. Uh, the only difference is that L'Allemand now is the owner of the company on the product. Okay, Adrien, uh, now Adrien will a little bit talk about uh, the product, the product characteristic and how to use it. Thank you, Mathieu. And so, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, indeed. So before to let the floor to the next uh, speakers and Sophie and uh, Yosef, I'm going to have a dive into what is our uh, biofungicide last stop contents and explain maybe more the, the mode of action. Uh, so on this slide, uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce uh, the main difference in the choice using either uh, chemical fungicide or large subcontents for uh, the management of um, sclerotinia disease. Um, the chemicals, the traditional chemical products that are used as systemic uh, or preventive uh, treatment uh, during uh, flowering, uh, they are effective in treating foliar symptoms and thus it won't impact the inoculum uh, levels in the soil. And so this means that the pathogen will still remain in the soil and even the inoculum will increase in case of uh, symptoms appear at harvest. And so the strategy uh, using only chemical fungicides in the disease management uh, can lead to a constant or increased dependency on chemical treatments over time uh, on sensitive crops like uh, beans, uh, winter seedweb and so on. And so in contrast, uh, Last Stop Contents uh, will offer uh, an alternative solution uh, to tackle, uh, let's say, both uh, foliar infection and also the inoculum. Uh, indeed, so it is a high effective uh, solution against uh, sclerotia. And so sclerotia, as uh, Mathieu uh, said, uh, this is the resting uh, structures of the fungus uh, in the soil. And uh, so this strategy can lead to progressive uh, soil decontamination. And the more less substance is used, the more the inoculum levels are reduced in the soil. And this results in a progressive decrease in the need of chemical products during the growth cycle and even the resistance management of, um, of a traditional uh, chemical fungicide. And so if you, we integrate uh, less subcontents in the crop protection strategy, so that means we can contribute to a long-term soil uh, health and uh, also sustainability for the, for the crop protection. And so now we've seen uh, this uh, difference. Uh, let's see what is the mode of action of uh, less subcontents in, in the next slides. So yes. So the subcontents uh, is a biofungicide composed of a specific strain of the beneficial fungus uh, Coniotherium minitans. And uh, this uh, strain and fungus is known for its efficacy since uh, many years, like uh, Mathieu explained. And so we propose a wettable granule formulation, uh, which uh, ensures uh, easy application for, for the farmers and growers. Uh, this product uh, has uh, many market registrations in many countries worldwide on a wide range of uh, arable crops uh, as well as vegetables and also ornamentals. 
and it can be used uh, either in uh, it can be used in soil incorporation uh, before sowing but also uh, for post harvest treatment after a crop uh, has been infected uh, by the disease um, at harvest and it acts uh, by uh, direct contact uh, parasites uh, the, the sclerotia in the soil before uh, destroying them and we can see uh, on the next slide uh, more details and so um, yeah on this slide, uh, the fungus uh, Coniturium militans consumes sclerotia. And so let's focus on the images here. On the left side, you can see untreated sclerotia. Uh, you can notice their intact structure. Uh, they have a yellow color. And so uh, they have a potential to still germinate in the soil before contaminating the crop. And in contrast, on the right side, uh, you can see sclerotia treated with the uh, stop contents. And you can notice here uh, there is a brown color. This is characteristic of their inactivation by the biofungicide. And uh, we observe this transformation over a period of 6 to 12 weeks. And it starts uh, with an initial contact, so as I said where the beneficial fungus so starts to colonize and uh, consume uh, the layers, the open layers of the sclerotia through uh, small pores. And you can see the photo at the top right of the screen uh, that represents uh, so the first steps of the contamination uh, with the layer of the, of the conitorium uh, on, the, on the sclerotia. And no, Mathieu, maybe let's continue with the field results. Yes, yeah, so now we will have uh, the introduction of uh, Anne-Sophie Kwasi. Uh, so she will introduce Unilet, first of all. And then uh, in the first part, uh, she will give an overview of uh, the, what is the vegetable industry uh, in France and also the use of uh, biological product in this uh, vegetable, vegetable sorry, industry. So we can go uh, ahead, Anne-Sophie. Thank you, Mathieu. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me in this meeting and uh, to giving me the possibility to testify about uh, our use of uh, uh, stop contents and uh, to uh, our knowledge uh, about, uh, about it. So what is my sector? The sector I, I'm working for is um, the sector of French processed vegetables. Uh, it represents uh, in, a, in a few figures uh, um, a group of uh, 24 industry sites, uh, all among uh, the French. Here is a, a, a map of France and you can see we, we have sites, industry sites in uh, three main regions in France, in France, in the north, in the west and in the southwest. Um, we collect uh, the vegetables uh, in two kinds of processes, uh, the canning industry or the freezing industry. Some, some sites are dedica dedicated both and uh, it represents uh, uh, to, to 10,000 uh, rural employment with growers and producer organizations and uh, um, factory in employees. Maybe you know some uh, of the brand names that uh, are uh, presented here, like uh, Bonduel, uh, Ardo, maybe you know them. Uh, it's important. We we have a major uh, range in uh, in the production and and uh, tra uh, transformation processing of the uh, vegetables. We are uh, of the first. We have the first range in Europe for uh, canned vegetables, mm -hmm. and uh, we are a major uh, exporter of frozen beans and also uh, canned peas at the at the world um, ranch. Uh, what is important to, to remain remind is that uh, one 
100% of our products are uh, grown in in France and uh, on in a contract contracted uh, fields with between uh, producer organizations and uh, industry. Uh, we are very uh, minor. No. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. We we are very um, little at uh, the the uh, as an area. We are only representing uh, seventy five thousand uh, hectares, so less than one percent arable farmland in France. But it's um, it's important for us, and it represents uh, fifteen different uh, vegetable prod products of uh, different importance. Uh, major major crops are uh, peas, green peas, and green beans, and then you you find uh, the thirteen others. And uh, the vegetable crop for industry is one third of the uh, overall uh, surfaces of vegetables in France. Next, please. Um, so. As a minor crop, uh, it 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 um, brings uh, a, a way of diversification in the into the farms. Uh, it's not the main uh, production of any of our farms, but it's uh, one of the three main ma major ones. Um, it is it, they are grown in. Um, middle uh, size uh, ex um, exploitations uh, farms uh, around uh, 150 hectares uh, farms and they represent in these farms uh, 17 hectares of vegetable the vegetable represents 17 hectares on the 150 and the other productions are mainly uh, major crops grains or seed protein crops uh, and other diversification crops, and also breeding for one third of them. Uh, what is important to understand is uh, that we need a close proximity between the, the, the fields and the industrial sites. Uh, and this explains why uh, there is a long-standing uh, organization between industry and farmers, and why 87% uh, of the surfaces are grown within uh, producer organizations because uh, we must respect this uh, very short delay between uh, harvest, field harvest, and uh, the factory process uh, to keep the product fresh. Uh, we have a strong commitment also with uh, organic production, which represents only 7% uh, of our, of our uh, areas, but it's increasing. Uh, the main part of uh, um, organic uh, crops are uh, grown in uh, Brittany in the west of France. Next, please. Thank you. And uh, for myself, I, I work in a, at Unilet, which is a, um, an organism uh, between uh, industry and farmers. They have um, decided uh, long ago to to mutualize, mutualize uh, their technical uh, services uh, in a collective strategy. Uh, of research and innovation, and uh, this is um, the reason why uh, Unilet was born. And now it's m more dedicated uh, for uh, responsible development of the production. We have uh, three uh, research centers in the uh, in the core of the um, the regions of production. Uh, four trial platforms and a team of 18 agronomists and uh, technicians to um, to conduct uh, trials uh, among the the four uh, axes of um, our research and innovation. First of all, preserving the means of production and attractiveness of production. Uh, by uh, working on the uses and minor uses 
that are necessary to to protect our crops because 99% uh, of the our uses are uh, uh, poorly covered or threatened. Uh, we we are um, starting a research program on uh, resilience to climate change and uh, management of water resources. Uh, evidently, we also try always to to en to enhance our practices by uh, driving the agroecological transition and uh, also meeting um, the consumer's expectations because uh, French people are very uh, um, aware of uh, the, their health and uh, global health and uh, they are more confident in uh, residue free or zero residue uh, labels for vegetables. So we try to collaborate and to 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 bring our crops in this uh, in this uh, objective. Next, please. So we have uh, do, done a lot of work with uh, bio solutions, um, and we we try to find a. a a solution for each crop and each problem, each crop problem, but it's not the case at present. Uh, I can um, show that uh, during um, the 10 last years, we have uh, driven um, more than 100 uh, trials, no, 600 mm -hmm. trials on 100 products, bio solutions, and um, mainly uh, on a well, on each kind of crop of vegetable crops that we we have, but mainly on uh, bean and peas. Uh, and besides, uh, we only uh, get good results with a very few of these solutions, which are uh, already um, or today uh, available on the market. And uh, livestock contents is uh, our first range. Um, solution that we we recommend uh, it is uh, well its purpose is uh, to control white mold evidently uh, sulfur is also used uh, to um, control powdery mildew and uh, ferric phosphate uh, is uh, used on slugs and these three are very the very uh, best of uh, the the bio solutions available on um, vegetable crops today in fields in open fields but we also expect uh, solutions uh, with fatty acids against aphids and uh, phosphonates against downy mildew okay Next, please Thank yeah. you. And now uh, Sophie will present uh, the, all the experience that uh, Unilet uh, um, had uh, in the past uh, with uh, Contents, all the trial that uh, they have performed. And she will present uh, a few of them and also the technical recommendation around the product. Yes, and um, if I may, uh, I will um, tell you um, the story of contents, uh, which was which was uh, which started uh, 20 years ago, uh, because uh, since uh, 2002 uh, we conducted uh, 75 trials with contents. So uh, during this story, uh, there was an evolution of questioning, uh, which was following uh, the the evolution of the problems in uh, in France and the, the transition, the agroecological transition. So first, uh, our first question was, which, which is the technical interest and uh, which is the uh, efficacy uh, of protection against white mold? But then uh, came uh, the question of financial interest and uh, env environmental protection. So the first uh, first period, uh, we conducted uh, efficacy field trials, and uh, I can um, I must present first um, the the 
the way uh, we, we conducted these trials. On the right, you can see uh, um, our scale of disease assessment. You, you will see in all the charts that um, we have a range from green, which is healthy plants that are noted at, uh, at um, harvest stage. Uh, green plants are healthy and red plants are, um, are uh, very uh, nearly uh, destructed. Uh, completely destructed, uh, mo more than 40% uh, stem destruction. And between, uh, we have uh, two categories, B and C, that uh, you, we, we symbolize uh, with the, the colors uh, light green and uh, orange. And you, we can, from the um, respective proportions of these four uh, categories, A, B, C, D, we can calculate a severity index and uh, from zero to uh, 100 percent and uh, this index we assume that uh, when it is um, over 20 percent we we can uh, we can uh, attest that uh, there is uh, um, less yield and there is an effect uh, in in the an impact on production and on the left, uh, you can see uh, the setup in the fields uh, that we we had for every trials. So um, we have uh, big big plots, uh, two plots in in one field. We separate the the big zone, which is uh, the 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 treated contents uh, zone, and. TC and um, a smaller zone that is uh, which is uh, the control zone with no contents and inside the both uh, we let uh, the same microplot um, um, trials with untreated controls in vegeta in aerial and vegetation uh, fungicides uh, or without. This, only these uh, microplots were ran, randomized, and uh, the, this part was annual with uh, field, field ve uh, vegetable uh, treatment, and uh, contents was either uh, annual or uh, pure annual uh, applications uh, after plowing and uh, after uh, before or after sowing. Okay. So uh, we choose to present you uh, this trial as an example of uh, the efficacy of uh, contents. Uh, on the left bar, you have uh, the, the repetition of uh, the plants, the categories A, B, C, D in uh, the untreated control. And you can see the, the, in this um, in this uh, trial that the disease severity is severe. Um, you can see on the second bar that uh, with a fungicide application, uh, uh, a standard program uh, with two applications of a combined uh, active ingredients, you have a very uh, good efficacy as uh, predicted. But with uh, less stop contents only, uh, um, sprayed uh, either uh, the year before and then uh, before the bean crop, just before the bean crop, so two applications in two years. Uh, there was a very good um, enhancing of the health of the plant. There were uh, more healthy plants and less damaged plants and evidently oh, well it, it's uh, you we, with the combined applications of um, fungicide uh, first f um, contents and then fungicides in, ve in vegetation you can see that the almost uh, 100 percent of the vegetation is healthy and very healthy so this good this uh, re, um, some some uh, the the results that we uh, often get with contents 
And then there was also a question about uh, how many applications and which dose rate is necessary to get a, a good uh, a good efficacy of contents. And in these uh, trials, it's uh, it's a pluriannual uh, application. Uh, some some uh, programs are compared. In, on the left, it's the control. And you see that uh, the white mold was um, measured on being in 2007, but uh, we can compare one application in 2007, just before the bean crop, uh, to uh, two uh, years of applications in uh, 2002 and 2003 on the, on the previous crops, or three applications uh, with, on uh, 2002, 2003, and 2007. So you can see that the the the, um, the projection is is better when you anticipate uh, the applications on the years before the crop, because uh, as you as you saw uh, in the presentations before, uh, um, contents needs time to uh, develop in the soil and uh, destroy the inoculum. So uh, it's uh, more hazardous to uh, apply just before the target crop. You, you can more benefit from the previous applications and the previous crops two or three years before. And then uh, the, the severity is in this, um, in this uh, fields where it was not very intense but you can see that uh, contents uh, contributes year after year to uh, reduce the soil inoculum and um, uh, enhance the efficacy. So uh, after the, getting these results, we were very uh, pleased and satisfied, but uh, it doesn't answer all the questions that we had about how it uh, how it functions in the, in the soil. Uh, because the problem in this in this trials is that we need a revealing crops that comes after um, pre many years of application. We need also in this crop that the conditions are favorizing uh, the disease and it's not always the case. So uh, we had to, to set up um, a, different, uh, a different organization, uh, different trials to, to, to answer the questions which dose of uh, contents is really uh, needed, uh, how deep uh, incorporation is needed and um, how long uh, uh, is needed for full efficacy. So that's yeah. <clears throat> oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. And now, yeah, you will present how you did uh, manage and assess the more directly the efficacy of contents uh, against the inoculum level. So to to get this uh, direct efficacy, we imagined uh, uh, a setup with uh, sclerosia boxes. And I have. The next slide. So on the photo, you can see it consists of small boxes and that uh, with definite uh, number of sclerosia, which are buried into the soil at one moment, in the moment of uh, the uh, incorporation of contents. And then they can be uh, uh, expurated. <laughs> um, we, we can um, complete um, get the boxes out of the soil uh, at different uh, at different times uh, and different uh, lengths of time after incorporation. So uh, and also we can bury them at uh, different depths, uh, five centimeters, which is the the depths of incorporation of contents generally if you if you put them after if you put it after um, the plowing and 25 uh, which is all the the burying of uh, soil 
uh, during plowing and uh, during many years. Uh, so in this experiment, we we, we wanted to uh, um, form, a, form a slide, please. Uh, Mathieu, can I have the former slide? Uh, sorry. <laughs> and on the right side, you can see that uh, we wanted to to estimate uh, the importance of the kind of soil uh, against uh, the kind of climate. Uh, in, on the on the time of uh, efficacy, so uh, we collected soils from uh, our different stations in in France, and they were different soils: sandy, uh, loam, sandy clay, and uh, we tested. We we traveled the we made the the soils travel between two regions. Uh, with different different climates, Brittany, which is a tempered climate, climate and southwest, which, which is warmer, and then we used the 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 box test uh, in the in the both the regions with uh, some treated with contents and some uh, untreated controls. Next please. And the results is uh, very uh, interesting because uh, you you can see uh, three kinds of uh, results. And on the bars you can see uh, the destruction rate of sclerosia after 72 days of buring and of act, acting of um, contents. The first result on the blue bars is that when you bury the boxes at and the sclerotia and the uh, treated soil at um, 24, uh, 25 centimeter depths, uh, there is a very low efficacy in both regions. The main efficacy is in the uh, five upper centimeters, and then it's different from a region to another. So we, we could say from a climate to another, uh, the efficacy is better in the Brit Britain uh, climate than in the Southwest uh, climate. And besides, there is less uh, difference between the kind of soils in each climate than between the kind of climate. So our conclusion is uh, that soil texture is less important than crop conditions for efficacy of livestock contents. Thank you. Um, ah, no, uh, no, okay. Now it's about the environmental impact. Uh, up. Yes, it's uh, the the last question was uh, is contents helpful for even environment environment protection goals, and uh, we compared uh, in a pluriannual trials uh, between uh, 20, 20, 2018 and twenty twenty uh, soil treatments regularly uh, uh, treated after a harvest with no soil treatment and uh, but always in the same zone of the plots and in uh, in 2021 we we grew a uh, bean as a revealing crop and we compared in microplots different fungicide programs uh, one standard program with repeated applications of uh, fungicides at full full dose rate that we we can uh, uh, sum, it, sum up in with a 100 index, and then uh, lower fungicide uh, programs, not zero percent, not zero fungicide, but a lower dose rate or a lower frequency, or with one one application uh, versus two. So, what are the results of this kind of a setup? So you can see this is the whole um, results uh, of the one trial in 2021 on bean. On the left, we, you have the results of the small plot uh, trials. 
and you can see that uh, besides uh, the control, a fungicide programs uh, were rather efficient, but uh, when you uh, divide uh, the, the dose rate uh, by two with the fungicide A, you have a lowering of uh, efficacy. But with the fungicide B, uh, you can, uh, you can um, divide uh, by two the dose rate and you can uh, level the same efficacy as fungicide at full program than full program A. On the right, with pluriannual contents applications, you can see that uh, uh, firstly, uh, without any fungicide applications, you, you, you have a um, rather healthy uh, crop. And combined with the fungicide application, it's, it's just a little uh, better. And so it reveals that when you apply contents, you can start to uh, think of uh, lowering the dose rate of, of your fungicides. Either it's A or B. Uh, you can um, put your confidence into, <laughs> you can trust uh, that uh, the efficacy of contents will allow you to, uh, to, to, to bring less uh, fungicides and it's uh, an, an environmental uh, result. 50% reduction is possible. Uh, for economical profit, uh, it has not much impact because you, you have to put uh, contents several times and it's, it has cost, evidently. Okay, <clears throat> I think that Sophie and um, I'm sorry, the time is running because we are only one hour. I think we really just keep your your the last part on because we have to give time to Joseph to speak because there is only 10 minutes left, uh, 12 minutes. So I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. So maybe, uh, Joseph, I will uh, uh, up put your slide. Uh, so Joseph is uh, um, IR, um, IR manager in uh, Czech Republic for AgroProtect, which is a big distributor for our product, uh, Livestock Contents. So they have a very uh, huge experience uh, with the product on the canola crop. Um, so Joseph, if you can explain a little bit your experience with uh, Contents uh, in your area. Okay, hello everybody. Thank you, thank you for the word. And please excuse my English because I am a beginner. Uh, please let me introduce our company and myself first. My name is Josef Svachouček and I have been working in agroprotein company as a sale manager for seven years. I am going to tell you in my short presentation how we manage uh, to reach 50 tons of last of contents WG and what are our key points of our strategy. Please, next. Uh, I would also like to introduce our company Agroprotec. We are a Czech company with headquarters in České Budějovice city in the south of Czech Republic and uh, we have been on the market already for 70 years and we have several sales representatives all around in our country. We make a B2B business and we have been selling classic pesticide, biological pesticide and aid agent and we started in 2004 with Contents WG and now we sell about 50 tons. Please next. Uh, brief description of OSR in Czech Republic. Uh, approximately, we have approximately 340,000 hectares of OCR of uh, two and a half million arable land. But we have intensive cultivation of other susceptible crops as puppy, sunflower, potatoes, vegetables, and etc. And weather is suitable for the sclerotinia infestation. 
but every year is different and the intensity of sclerotinia infestation is also different. Last top content WG market share in the current Czech oil seed rape market is around 10% OCR. Next, please. Uh, our history of the development of contents in the Czech Republic. Uh, we started uh, with registration field trials uh, from uh, 2002 to 2004, and registration was valid uh, since July 2004. And we started sale in summer 2004, and we continued uh, with semi field trials on the farmer level from 2004 to 2007 and something from recent history, uh, adding registration for Merticillium in 2024. Please, next. Uh, and what is the key, what are the key points in our strategy? Well-educated people at Agroprotec with perfect knowledge of the product. It's very important because we must uh, answer uh, to farmers a lot of questions about application and effic efficacy and visit farmers intensively and emphasize the importance of prevention against clerontia. Uh, my, my own opinion is most farmers only deals with diseases when they see them in the crop. But we must remind last stop contents as a solution with importance of prevention. Direct personal relationship with the farmers. Uh, of course, everything goes better when you have a good relationship with the farmers. Constantly mention last of content WG at seminars throughout the year. Me uh, and my colleagues include a few slides about last of contents at uh, each seminars where we participate. Uh, Introduce uh, growers with good results from nearby area. Uh, usually the neighbor farmers also have a problem with sclerotinia too. So let him know about the good results with uh, last top contents because uh, when a farmer who used last top contents has a healthy crop, uh, it is the best investment. Cooperation, uh, to be interested in the application, any problem with it, uh, any problem must be solved quickly and to the satisfaction of the farmers. Cooperation with Union of Oilseed Growers and Processors, uh, this organization has influence on the farmers and it is good to cooperate with them on trials and seminars and uh, next action. Publication activity, professional journals and similar media. Uh, this has a great importance uh, when, when the incidence of sclerotinia is high in a given, given year. Price stability of the product for end user. Uh, it's easy, uh, times are hard now in, in agriculture and it's not good to raise price and it looks better for every brand and for last of contents when the price is stable. Fast and efficient logistic, of course, and at the end marketing support, for example, some gift items with logo last of contents in the category must have things or something similar. Please next. And our position and strategy, strategy of last top content WG, we have uh, two choices, uh, two, kil two kilos per hectare at sowing and one kilo per hectare post harvest. Uh, both of these applications are effective and proven. Uh, in my eyes, uh, two kilo is uh, better in that, that uh, farmers see the effect immediately in the current uh, season. And I think uh, this application is more effective against verticillium, but uh, the disadvantage is the time or employee limitation during the harvest, because because in my country is harvest of, of wheat and uh, sowing of OCR in the same time, and uh, double price per hectare, of course. 
and one one kilo strategy is easier for for the time management and uh, it is uh, for good money and uh, the main advantage is application directly on uh, sclerotia uh, i think that uh, around 70 maybe more percent is done with a two kilo application in my country maybe maybe plays a role uh, some uh, bureaucracy or some some new rules uh, which uh, nobody nobody will will see what will be tomorrow or after one year thank you it's it's all work. okay thank you Jeff, for your sharing and for your experience with the product now there is still four minutes left uh, we can exceed the time there are some uh, some questions uh, Mathieu raised in the q a chat box and it's uh, interesting because um, it's linked uh, with the last slide of uh, joseph there are two questions uh, linked with the uh, post harvest uh, applications uh, when people um, asked uh, why is there a difference of those rates between pre-harvest and direct application on two crop residues. I mean, uh, why uh, the difference of those rates at pre-sowing and incorporation and on crop residues and in the same um, in the same link, uh, another people uh, ask, how do you recommend to apply contents if a farmer grows sensitive crops using no-till technology? So that's linked with the summer application. And so um, first, the difference of those rates uh, at before sowing and on crop residue is not the same indeed because on crop residue um, you have the possibility so to uh, <clears throat> to to contact a fresh sclerotia on the vegetation so you or a load to to decrease the dose rate uh, by half uh, because uh, the the application is uh, is more efficient and uh, that's why you can also reduce uh, the cost and to uh, to uh, use uh, contents uh, in the in the crop rotation uh, and maybe Joseph uh, this is something you you, you recommend for it. it is and um, the application uh, using no till technology uh, so you have the possibility uh, to to incorporate uh, the product uh, before a rainfall or uh, and so uh, before it, uh, we have uh, we need uh, 15 millimeters of, uh, of rainfall uh, in order to, to well incorporate uh, the product in the first centimeters of the soil and it's uh, totally enough uh, to um, to have uh, an efficient um, application Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, maybe I can add that uh, yeah. on the contrary, when you do uh, plowing regularly, that's the reason why you have you have results only if you if you, if you apply um, contents uh, year after year because each year you you incorporate and you puree either the sclerosia and uh, the and the contents uh, deep deeply so you 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 have fresh sclerotia on the on the upper uh, layer and uh, you have to uh, restart uh, applying contents so on the contrary when you are you are in no till uh, production you you can uh, you can estimate that you reach a quicker um, the result of uh, destroying all the inoculum in the upper layer. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is also a question about when we are facing hot and dry conditions, is also contents uh, applied onto the crop residue is still efficient? Uh, I would say yes. So we have a, a study um, um, uh, that has been done in Wismar in uh, in the field um, with application during the summer in very hot and dry condition and they have followed the survival of the the spores of contents during four weeks uh, in very dry condition where soil reached like 40 even 50 degrees during the day and we got after four weeks uh, 73 
percent of survival of the spores, uh, which were uh, which was a very good rate after such conditions. So hot temperature, okay, decrease a little bit the viability, but not too much. And the 33 percent of survival are still able to uh, to tackle and to destroy the uh, sclerotia. So let's go to Tons is not really affected by hot temperature and it can be can survive in this uh, condition but the incorporation is still uh, recommended and mandatory why first of all the, the incorporation will of course protect a little bit more the um, the, the the contours from the from the sun and from the, the condition but also uh, the incorporation will allow the product to touch and to tackle the sclerotia that are in this five, seven, seven centimeters of the soil. So incorporation is mandatory to touch correctly all the sclerotia that are located in this five, seven first centimeter of the soil. It's to make in contact the product with the sclerotia. Okay. And uh, there is also a question. How could we explain the difference between a foliar biofungicide strategy and a long-term consent strategy? Uh, do you want to explain, Adrien, or I do? Okay, so it was uh, in one diapositive. Um, so chemical products uh, are used as a preventive uh, treatment uh, during the flowering. And so it's only effective uh, against uh, foliar symptoms. And so uh, it has no impact uh, on the inoculum uh, in the soil. And so the, the inoculum is still remaining in the soil. And so uh, next year on the next uh, sensitive crop, you will still um, have a risk of uh, damage uh, by the disease uh, for, for the next crop. So uh, if you want to, to tackle uh, the, the, the inoculum and to reduce uh, the risk uh, within uh, the coming years, uh, the one way strategy is to, to use uh, contents and to, to, to manage so the risk uh, during the growth cycle with, uh, with the foliar fungicide and so to, to work on the, on the two sides of the strategy. Uh, first, uh, impact on the inoculum then uh, in, to, to manage uh, the, the symptoms uh, on the plant. Okay, so I think now we can close the meeting because uh, yeah, the, the time is over. Thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I think this uh, webinar was recorded, Caroline, if I'm not mistaken, so it can be um, it can be, uh, um, yeah, um, I would say, watched by everyone later on if you have missed something. Thank you very much and have a good uh, day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.